Hello folks, welcome to the channel. In this video we're going to take a look at FL Sun's new S1 Pro 3D printer, which is a fully enclosed Delta style printer with a 320mm diameter by 430mm high build volume, and boasts an unprecedented max travel speed of up to 1200mm per second, an acceleration rate of up to 40,000mm per second squared, and a peak flow rate of up to 110 cubic millimeters per second. It's equipped with a 350 degree Celsius hot end and a 120 degree Celsius hotbed that, with the help of magnetically sealed doors, can passively heat the enclosed chamber up to 50 degrees Celsius. Combined with a textured PEI plate, this makes it ideal for printing with all kinds of filaments from common modeling filaments like PLA and PETG to finicky engineering filaments like ABS and TPU, and it can do it much faster than a typical Core XY printer. It also has a heated dry box built into the top of the machine to keep filament dry, as well as a HEPA and activated carbon air filter, and a USB camera for time-lapse recording and real-time monitoring through Wi-Fi and FL Sun Slicer software, or their new mobile app which allows you to control and monitor the machine from anywhere you wish. But a large built-in touchscreen provides everything you need to print offline if you prefer. It also has a small built-in UPS which will maintain power to the machine if the main grid goes down so that it can save its progress and resume an interrupted print when the power is restored. It also has various calibration options for motion control, vibration compensation, and auto bed leveling, as well as an AI inspection system that helps to ensure successful prints by verifying first layer adhesion, calibrating flow and accuracy, and includes features like filament runout, clog, spaghetti, and object detection. The machine is shipped almost completely assembled, you just need to attach the doors and touchscreen, then turn it on and follow the on-screen instructions to set up and calibrate the machine before loading the filament. FL Sun included a spool of white high-speed PLA with the machine, but I'm going to start with a spool of standard PLA to see how well it prints in this machine, and I chose a matte black because it'll show detail a lot better on the camera than white does. With the machine ready, I opened the project folder to access the print file stored on the machine and clicked on the classic Benchy for the first test print, which usually takes around 15 to 20 minutes for a typical Core XY printer.
I can see a few things were adjusted in the G-code that sacrificed some quality to help lower the print time. The seams also don't line up as good as they should in the back corner, and there's some drooping in the overhangs. But overall it's not too bad for printing in just 8 minutes. Next, I printed the flower pot file provided in the project folder. This took a little over two hours to print, and the only issue that I could see is that I should have adjusted the Z-offset a bit lower while it was printing. Next, I attempted another long print from the project folder, but this time there was an extrusion issue and the machine threw a clog error code and automatically stopped the print. I reheated the nozzle and extruded the filament without any sign of a clog and attempted the same print one more time, but the problem repeated. That told me that the print speed and flow rate were just a bit too high for the standard filament, so I switched over to the high speed filament that FL Sun provided and printed the model without any issues, and the quality came out really nice. But as I mentioned before, being white makes it really hard to see the detail on camera. Next, I printed one more file from the project folder with the white PLA, but this time I selected the time-lapse recording option to record the process with the built-in USB camera. Next, I switched back to the black PLA and printed a custom project with functional gears and screws at a more appropriate print speed for standard PLA.
with the exception of one of the gears breaking loose and having to reprint it, these turned out pretty good as well. I ended up breaking apart during the assembly too, but super glue made it an easy fix. Everything fit together well. The only problem that I could see with the print quality is that I should have enabled Z-Hop for the last layer to keep the nozzle from dragging on the surface when it changed position. As some of you know, I build custom axial flux wind turbines and have featured a few of them on this channel. I'm gearing up for another build in the very near future, but instead of hand carving the blades and wrapping them with fiberglass as I usually do, I want to try a few different methods using vacuum injection to make solid fiberglass and carbon fiber blades, and using a new CNC router machine that I'm going to review after this video to rough out wooden blade cores that will be wrapped in fiberglass or carbon fiber, and see which is the most practical method for producing a strong but relatively light, semi-flexible blade. In this video, I'm going to print a full-size model of the blade with the S1, which I'll use as a buck to cast negative fiberglass molds for making composite blades. I have a blade already designed using my blade element momentum theory worksheet, which automatically generates chord parameters for each blade element after inputting a few basic settings. This worksheet is available for download on my website if anyone's interested, by the way. With the math worked out, I drew the blade in SketchUp and divided it into sections that would fit within the S1's build volume, with mortise and tenon joints and through holes to receive quarter inch reinforcing fiberglass rods during the assembly. The rods are just there to stiffen the blade to put up with the abuse of using it as a buck around the shop. It'll never be mounted to a turbine for any purpose other than a mock-up. With the models ready, I imported them into FL Sun Slicer software, then selected the nozzle size and presets for generic PLA, but I changed the wall count to 4 to provide a bit more material around the perimeter for sanding and polishing the blade after assembly. Then I sliced the model to generate the G-code and get an estimate on how much filament will be used and how long it will take to print. Then I connected the printer through Wi-Fi and uploaded the G-code to start printing remotely. In total, it took around 9 hours to print the entire blade. Next, I assembled the parts with a two-part epoxy that I dyed black, making sure to cover the fiberglass rods and all joint surfaces. Then I clamped it straight on the workbench and left it to cure overnight before sanding away the excess epoxy that squeezed out from the joints. I still have quite a bit of sanding and polishing to do to get this ready for casting, but everything turned out as good as I could have hoped and I now have a buck that's a lot more accurate than anything I could have carved by hand. In a future video, I'll show you how I use this to make fiberglass molds for casting composite blades. But that's it for this video, folks. Other than the extrusion issue caused by the standard PLA printing too fast, I've had no problems using this machine so far. The features are great and work exactly as they should, the build quality is the best I've personally seen, and it's the fastest printer that I'm aware of. But bear in mind that the max 1200 mm per second travel speed is just that. Your actual print speed will always be limited by the properties of the filament that you're using. While I got pretty good results with a standard generic filament, if you want to make the most of this machine's potential, then I recommend investing in high speed filament that can handle a high flow rate and using the presets in the slicer software as a benchmark for dialing in your settings. 
but let me know what you think of it in the comments, and if you are interested in getting one, then I put a link in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and take care, folks.